All right, so um, if I could get someone to read the next little section there, um, Matthew 22, 15 through 22. Do I have a volunteer for that? Linda, I'm sorry. And then Jill, did you have your hand up too? Okay. So Linda, go ahead, go, Linda, go ahead and unmute yourself and if you would read uh, 15 through 22. Then the Pharisees met together to try to think of some way to trap Jesus into saying something for which they could arrest him. They decided to send some of their men along with the Herodians to ask him this question. Sir, we know you are very honest and teach the truth regardless of the consequences, without fear or favor. Now tell us, is it a right to pay taxes in the Roman government or not? Jesus said what they were after. You hypocrites, he explained. He exclaimed, you are, you are, you are trying to fool with your tr uh, trick questions. Here, show me a coin. And they handed him a penny. Whose picture is stamped on it? He asked them. And whose name is this beneath the picture? Caesar, they replied. Well, then, he said, give it to the Caesar if he is, if it is he. And give God everything that belongs to God. His reply surprised and baffled them and they went away. Okay, except they didn't because they're in the next <laughs> sub parable too. But yeah. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, so we have this kind of first test. That, and remember, um, as we read these parables, the religious leaders are trying to to trip Jesus up and to get Jesus to do or say something that they can arrest him by. Okay, so they're really kind of trying to trying to entrap Jesus into saying something that's going to show he's a uh, he's a zealot or an insurrectionist or someone who's going against Rome or going against religious authority. They don't care at this point. They just want him gone. And so they've, they've kind of tried to get to, to trip him up religiously and they haven't, they've failed there. And so now they're going to try to get him to say something against Rome that they can go back to the Roman authorities and say, Oh, Jesus said that the Jews don't have to pay taxes to, to Rome or, or whatever. And then, you know, kind of get him branded as an insurrectionist. So, um, and just a little context here too. Remember that this is taking place in the temple. Okay. This is taking place in the Jewish temple where there are no graven images. And yet one of the religious leader pulls out a Roman coin. <laughs> so once again, just by their question, they're showing how hypocritical they are because they're carrying coins with graven images into the temple to try to trap Jesus. And so, you know, we constantly have this, this kind of hypocritical thing going on, but they show him the coin and they say, you know, hey, should we pay these taxes? And Jesus, rightly enough, as Linda read, said, hey, who's on the coin? And they say, Caesar. He said, well, if it's Caesar's, give it back to him. It doesn't belong to me, it belongs to Caesar. Yeah, so he said, but you should also give back to God what is his. Now, an interesting point here is, what is God's? Everything, right? Did not God not create everything? The animals, the trees, the land, the metals used for the coins. Um, really, technically, <laughs> everything we come in contact with as humans, even other humans, are part of God's creation. So when Jesus says, give back to God's what is God's, what he really is meaning, though, is, is our heart, is our soul. And this isn't the first time Jesus has said this. Remember all the parables that he said, sell everything you have and give it to the poor, and then you'll be closer to God. It, it's his distinction between falling in love with earthly things and falling in love with heavenly things. And once again, this thing with the taxes and coins, that's earthly. That has to do with the earthly life of the Romans and the Jews in this particular context. And Jesus is saying, no, you need to put that stuff behind you. Don't worry about those earthly things. Worry about godly things. Have you given your heart and soul to God? Have you given your mind to God and your very person to God? Maybe that's what you need to worry about and not the coinage. And so he answered them in a very, a very deft way and in a, in a way that, as they say, baffled them. <laughs> so they didn't know where to go next because they really tried hard to trap him, but Jesus was Jesus was above the trap, and um, he got away from that one. But they're not done yet. 
So they've tried politically. This is their political test. They've tried to get him to say something bad against the Romans. And Jesus has passed that test. And so in this next one, they're going to try to trip him up scripturally and get him to say something against the Torah, against the scripture, which will um, also give them cause to arrest him. So um, Matthew 22, verses 23 through 33. Jill, did you want to do that? Did you have your hand raised to read? I, I can't unmute yourself. Here, let me unmute you real quick. Got it there. I, okay, yeah. Okay. Um, I have the Bible up on top of my Zoom page so I can see it. So because I do it online. So that's why it takes me a minute to Oh no problem. Okay, so what twenty-two through what did you say? Uh, chapter twenty-two verses twenty-three through thirty-three. Yeah, twenty-three. Okay. Yeah. The same day came to him the Sadducees, who say that there is no resurrection, and asked him, saying, Master, Moses said, if a man die, having no children, his brother shall marry his wife, and raise up seed unto his brother. Now there were with us seven brethren, and the first, when he had married a wife, deceased, and having no issue, left his wife unto his brother. Likewise, the second also, and the third unto the seventh. And at last of all, the woman died also. Therefore, in the resurrection, whose wife shall she be for the seven? For they all had her. Jesus answered and said unto them, Ye do err, not knowing the scripture nor the power of God. For in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. But as touching the resurrection of the dead, have you not read that which has spoken unto you by God, saying, I am the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. And when the multitude heard this, they were astonished at his doctrine. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Okay. And I got you muted back. So, so now they have the theological, uh, the, um, the religious test, the scriptural test, and this is really kind of a convoluted test that I'm throwing at him. But um, one thing we have to remember here that the, the Sadducees were a different group of Jewish religious leaders because they believed only in the Torah, the first five books of the Old Testament. They didn't believe in the rest of it. Everything they believed that we needed for life was in the first five books. And they did not believe in resurrection or life after death. They believed that if you lived according to the Torah and according to God, you lived your best life here on earth. If you lived according to God's commandments and such, and then when you died, you died, and your life was what you made of it here on earth. And so they did not believe that there was a resurrection. They didn't believe that there was another place that we go. And so they're trying to, to trap Jesus with this marriage question, which once again, Jesus has told them all this thing about marriage and divorce Moses did for you guys because you were hard of heart. You know, uh, God doesn't really have a whole lot to say about that. He thinks everybody needs to do individually, but they do have this thing where if, if a male person died, uh, his wife would be married to the oldest available brother of the man to help care for her. And the point of the scripture was not so much about marriage, but it was about caring for the widow. Because as a widow, remember that women were politically an underclass in the time of Jesus. And in fact, in the, New, the Old Testament, they were pretty much nothing more than property. Um, remember the, 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 the scriptural test we had where a, a man could write a decree of divorce against the woman if she burned his dinner, or if you know she looked at him sideways or said something wrong. Um, women were not equals to men in the eyes of, you know, first century Palestine. They, they were basically lesser beings. And so the Bible felt that they needed to be taken care of because a woman typically could not hold a job. You know, the housework and the household were her job. Well, it's hard to get paid for that if you don't have a husband who's also supporting you financially. Um, the women, you know, couldn't do certain things in the temple the women were basically an underclass. And so the law stated that women needed to be taken care of, particularly widows, if the husband died. And so they came up with this law that 
to keep the woman from being a widow, from being unwed, she would be permitted to marry the oldest unmarried son of, of, the, of her husband. And it was really more of a protection, but the Sadducees are kind of turning this into a, into a test thing. And so there's this woman who really kind of convolutedly marries a husband, he dies, she marries his brother, he dies, marries another one, he dies, down the road to seven people. And so none of them, have, you know, none of them have survived past that. And so when she dies, who is she going to be re reunited to? And I can almost see Jesus doing a face palm <laughs> as he's hearing this question. <laughs> and Jesus is saying, look, you guys are once again putting all of your thoughts, all of your attention into earthly things. When the second coming comes and we're reunited with God and we're taken up to our heavenly kingdom, things are going to be different. We're not going to necessarily have the physical bodies that we have now. We're going to have spiritual bodies. And so the things that happen with our spiritual bodies, i.e. marriage and physical union, aren't going to be there. That doesn't mean that we're not going to be reunited with people that we shared in this life, but we'll be reunited with them spiritually on a different plane. And so, and, and Jesus kind of uses the point here of the words of God where God says, I am the God of Abraham. I am the God of Jacob. Notice that's not past tense. He doesn't say I was the God of Abraham and was the God of Jacob, but they're dead now, so I'm not their God anymore. He's saying I am. I am when they were first here. I am as we continue on. God is the God of the physically dead as well as the physically living. Because in God, we are all alive on that secondary spiritual plane. And so to God, Abraham is still alive. To God, Jacob is still alive. To God, everyone who has passed before us is still alive. And God is still their God. God is also our God here on this physical earth. And when we die, God will continue to be our God. Our physical life or death doesn't matter to our lifehood to God. We are still God's creation. We are still God's children. And God is still our God. Whether we're in this physical realm here on earth, toiling away, waiting for the second coming, or whether we have passed away and have gone up into heaven to be with Jesus, we are still God's people, God's children. And so God is a God of all, not just the living here on earth. And I can see why they might have been baffled by that. There are a lot of people who still on this present earthly plane are baffled by that are baffled by what happens to us, what happens to us when we die, what happens to our loved ones. And we just don't know. We'll find that out up yonder when we get there, how it all works out. But we can take Jesus' words to heart that God is with us now on earth and God will be with us later in the next place that we go. He won't be a, I was Jim's God or I was Rosemary's God. He still is. He is, I am the God of all of these people, and I will still be your God, even after your earthly body wears out and you move on to the next spiritual existence. And so that was something the Sadducees really didn't want to hear, but they really couldn't argue about it without going against God's own word. I am the God of Abraham, the God of Jacob, the God of Isaac. They would have to go against God to fight what Jesus' answer was. So Jesus took their scriptural test and threw one right back at them, and they didn't have a response for it. Um, so let's take a break there just real quick and maybe have a quick discussion, and then we have one third test that the um, Pharisees are going to throw to Jesus. So I'm going to unmute everybody real quickly, and then we can, um, we can all just have a little discussion. Da -da -da. Oh, let me unmute all. Okay, everyone's unmuted. So... Um, any thoughts on those two little parables, those two little stories, those two little tests of Jesus? Well, I'm going to throw something out, Cindy, back to you. You said, when will we know we're ready? When we can answer questions like this, like Jesus did, we're getting closer. And I know we're laughing, but what I'm saying is when we in our hearts and our souls, without having to open a book, have a mastery of the scripture, 
-hmm. and a mastery of the understanding of Jesus that we can answer these kind of queries in a truly scriptural and theological way, the way Jesus does, then we're closer to being ready. Okay. Mm -hmm. Are we there yet? Absolutely not. But, mm -hmm. but Cindy, when you were kind of talking about what's our goal, our goal is, is to know the scriptures in our hearts so well that when someone throws a test at this like this, and you know, they could these days, well, you know, do you think it's fair for people who are Christian to pay taxes? You know, we kind of have a response for that. We give back to the government. What's the government's? The government prints the money. We give it back to them. That's not ours. It's the government's. We just use it for a little while. Our goal is to give back to God. What is God's? God's creation. The blood, sweat, and tears of our own personage. Helping mm -hmm. other people, loving other people is what we give back to God ourselves. God gave us ourselves, our heart, our mind, and our soul. That's what we need to give back to God. That's a good answer to that question. Yeah. But there's a million other questions. I think y'all agree out there that people catch us off guard. I'll have to share an experience. Right as Jim began this journey to become a priest and our world was swirling around us, we did a, um, what was it called? Faith Alive. Faith Alive. Um, I don't know if any of y'all have done that. Didn't sound like a we did it. it. Yes. It's, it's for we the had church. it at St. Mary's. Mm -hmm. did you? Okay. So we went down to Miami to some church there and they were telling us what we had to do. And again, they pulled me into it. I wasn't the one saying, oh, I want to do this. And um, so they said, we're going to break into groups and we're going to lead prayers and we're going to, you know, and so I'm with this other, they put me with this other guy and I'm like, don't call on me to pray. Please don't call on me to pray. Please don't. So we sit in the group and he said, Sharon, why don't you start us out? And I was like, oh, no. <laughs> but I have to say, being at the very bottom of the group, not wanting to be there or do that, I took a deep breath and I said, Holy Spirit, be with me. And I'm not going to say it's the most gracious prayer that I ever said, but words came out of my mouth that I could have never written down if I'd had six right. weeks to prepare for this thing. And that taught me in that whole weekend, it was not what I knew or what I could share or how I could share it. But that at that time, if I took a deep breath, be still and know that I am God and, and, and ask for help, that help came. So I just want to share that to you all that even though we don't have all the answers that he, and I've seen him come out with. Point at me, I don't have all the answers either. <laughs> but I've seen him come out with answers before, like, where did that come from? Yeah. But they were good. But if we ask for, if we're at that place that we know we can ask for help and ask for God or the Holy Spirit to be with us, those answers come, whether they be the greatest or the, or just you know, sometimes no is an answer. You don't have to go into all types of um, definitions and things like that. So again, I know he, what he's saying is right, that we know some of these answers that other people don't know. But even when we don't know it and we have faith and we ask for that help, it, it happens. It, it comes. So, you know, good luck. But, but I want you all to know that you're there more than, I mean, I was always the one that I don't know enough. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to do. And, and, and I've realized that, that I do know more than I think I do. And if I just take a minute and say, you know, Lord be with me, um, the right things come out of my mouth and <laughs> the wrong things. So. And, 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 you know, um, and, and Jesus does tell the disciples that. Remember, he tells the disciples that people will test you, but the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. will give you the words to say. And so... Mm -hmm. It is important that we call on the Holy Spirit to help us mm -hmm. in these times of trial and these times of trusting to know the right words to say to people. And, and I think the most important thing there is speaking from the heart. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we all have Christian hearts and we all know in our heart the right things to do, even if we don't always do them. And, and Carol, I appreciate very much your um, reflection on being hypocritical even if unintentionally the other day, because we do. I mean, and, and, and we always think of that as a bad term, but we all are indeed hypocrites because we don't fully live our life the way Jesus told us to every second of the day. Um, that would be a perfection that we just can't attain. Can't do it. But it doesn't mean that it's not a perfection that we don't uh, aspire to. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, th that's the journey. That's the journey is to continue to 
find the ways to stop our, our hypocritical actions of, you know, saying peace be with you and then cursing somebody in the traffic when they cut us off or, um, you know, those are the kind well, of- I've never done that. With, but but <laughs> that's, what, that's what we aspire to. It's what we aspire to as Christians yeah. is to live that life that we fully follow the things that we know in our heart are right and that come out of our mouth, but we don't always portray in our actions. And, and it's a constant struggle for all of us. It, it, it's, it's, that's our cross that we bear. When we talk about Jesus says, carry your cross, that is mm -hmm. the cross that we all as Christians care uh, carry is our inability to truly be like Jesus all the time. And to some people, it doesn't matter to them. They don't care. Mm -hmm. To some people, it cares very much to us that we're not acting the way that we profess that we should act or want to act or need to act. Um, you know, and, and Paul hit it dead on. I, I do the things that I know I shouldn't do, and I don't do the things I know I should. Yeah. Um, you know, <laughs> this is St. Paul, you know, who created basically the church. But he knew even himself that our human nature is, is, is the main roadblock to our getting close to Christ and our perfection with Christ. And we have to deal with that every day, and it's a struggle every day. It's the cross that we carry. <laughs> It's the burden that we carry is not being able to be as perfect as we would like to be, but we aspire to be. And that's what's important. That's the trying. That's the trying of every single day. We're trying to do a little better than every single day. We're continuing on that walk and continuing down the path. Um, any other thoughts on the, the Caesar, the coinage uh, story? Or was that pretty well self-contained? Mm -hmm. That's good. Yeah. Okay. How about the uh, the second uh, little test there, the test about the biblical proofs and God as a living God? Any thoughts on that? Anything peak you there? Peak your curiosity? Okay. Well, then um, let's go on to the third test. And this is, the, you know, we're good Episcopalians. We do things in threes. So... Uh, so, so are the religious leaders. So they, they've now done a political test and a scriptural test, and now comes the theological test. So um, could I get someone to read Matthew 22, 34 through 40 for me? Matthew 22, 34 through 40. Oh. Melinda, thank you. Go ahead and okay. unmute yourself. I'll go and meet everybody else. And then Melinda, you unmute yourself. Hold on. All right, I go to Use 40. These controls. So mute all, yeah. Mm -hmm. And... I'm going to unmute you, Melinda. Da, da, da. Yeah. Gotta be on the... I've got to be on you. Okay. Unmute. There you go. Okay. Oop. I got you. Okay. <laughs> now I got you. Good. All right. When the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a lawyer, asked a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, we have this really interesting, um, I'm going to go ahead and meet you back, Melinda, just one second, um, so we don't bounce around. So now this is the theological test, and they're once again, remember, trying to trip him up. They're trying to get Jesus to say that one of the other commandments is greater or whatever, so they can, um, so they can trip him up. But, uh, you know, Jesus, and he knows this from the heart, because, of course, he is the voice of God, because he is God. Um, they ask him, which is greatest? And he says, hey, that first one's the greatest. Love God with all your heart, soul, might, strength, spirit, uh, whatever adjective you want to use. And as we look at the other nine commandments, we see that Jesus is absolutely correct. If we love God with all of our heart and soul and strength and mind, those other nine commandments are really simple. We kind of do them anyway, <laughs> if we're truly loving God. So, um, you know, really the Ten Commandments are God saying, this is what's important and this is how you show that to me really but really the first commandment the second love your neighbor as yourself which jesus goes on to say even more importantly love your neighbor as i have loved you i've given you a model of how that love should be uh, those are the two most important things for us because 
when we love our neighbor, we're showing that love toward God because we're showing love toward God's creation. And that perhaps is the hardest thing for us to really deal with as Christians is even those annoying people, even those people that we dislike, even those people who we think are mean and hateful and rude, they are part of God's creation too. And so our reaction to them is not to hate them, dislike them, disregard them. Our job is to find the God in them, to try to touchstone with the Jesus Christ in them and pull that out, to pull their light out of the darkness. Now, is that easy? Absolutely not. It's one of the hardest things that we have to do as Christians is to really show God's love for another as part of God's creation. Because so many people are, quite frankly, very unlovable. <laughs> they are, quite frankly, you know, uh, very hard for us to show that love for. But Jesus doesn't say, go out and love all the people that are easy to love. Um, that wouldn't be a very hard task for us, would it? I think we could probably surround ourselves with a group of people that we love and that love us and are easy to love. And yeah, peace, love, and happiness, everything's good here. But Jesus is like, that's not what God is calling us for. God is calling us to love those people, especially that are hard to love. Our enemies, those that have spoken against us, those who have acted against us. Because sometimes, and, and, and you know, pretty much every night on evening prayer, we pray the prayer attributed to St. Francis. When you think about that prayer in light of this, it is in pardoning, in saying, you know what, I forgive you to those who have done wrong to us. Notice the words of St. Francis, not that they are pardoned, but that we are pardoned. When we pardon someone else, we share the joy of not carrying that around with us. When we forgive someone else, we share in the joy and grace of not carrying that around with us, not carrying that 10 ton weight of anger and resentment and whatever. So when we love each other as God has instructed us to do and love each other as part of God's creation, that's not for them, that's for us. Because carrying on to that anger and resentment is a roadblock to us. It's a huge wall in our journey. Because it's like pulling a 10-pound anvil behind us on our journey. And we have to let that go. Um, there's a real cool story that I'll share with you that um, was shared with me a long time ago. And I've actually used it in a, in a Curcio uh, Royo and stuff. And it's a story about a, a, a guy that's um, he's really in a hurry, running out of a building in New York. And he flags down a cab and he gets his cab and jumps in and shouts out his direction where he's going. And, you know, the cabbie's going down the street. And then all of a sudden, here comes a New York garbage truck. Boom. And he cuts him off and almost runs him off the road and kills the both of them in this taxi cab. And the taxi cab looks up at the garbage truck and he says, God bless you. And the guy in the back seat just can't believe it. He said, oh, my God, that guy almost ran us off the road and killed us. He almost killed both of us. He was not paying attention and in a hurry. He said, how could you bless him after that? And the guy said, you know, that guy in his garbage truck is more of a metaphor. We all have garbage that people carry around with us. And I can either take his garbage on or I can say, God bless him and let him go on his way. I have enough of my own garbage. I don't need to have his on top of that. And so he blessed them and he let him go instead of carrying that anger and resentment about him cutting him off in traffic of all things. And that's a really good lesson for us because the guy that cut him off might not have even known that he did it. And I can guarantee you that he's not worrying about it. So why are we? Why are we carrying all that anger and everything with us when we should just let it go as a blessing and say, you know what? You really said something ugly about me, and I didn't appreciate it very much, but God bless you. God be with you and go on your way. I forgive you. I'm not going to carry that around with me. Although I could, I'm not going to. And that's what Jesus is talking about here when he says, love one another 
and find the God in each other. Those people who are ugly to us are still part of God's creation. They are still worthy in God's eyes, even though they get under our skin and poke us and prod us and really upset us, they are still God's people too. And so rather than fight fire with fire, you know, like Martin Luther King says, you can't fight hate with hate. You can only fight hate with love. You can't fight darkness with more darkness. You can only fight darkness with light. We have to be that light. We have to be that light against the darkness and we have to be that love against the hate. Because if we don't, A, who else is going to? And if we don't, what does that say about us as Christians? If we profess to love one another as Jesus loved us, but we're unwilling to do it, are we not then being as hypocritical as the Pharisees in spouting the law, but not living the law? It's an important thing for us to consider. It's an important thing for consider, you know, I love all these things kind of go for circles, Cindy, because it kind of gets back to you said, you know, when were we there? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, when we can, when we can love each other, even in these most dire circumstances, when we can love people who have offended us or hated us or been rude to us or done things to us just to get it off of us, you know, and forgiving them even for, you know, the things that they've done to us that's when we're getting really close. That's when we're getting closer. That's when we're being the Christians that Jesus is calling us to be. That's when we know we're there. So that might be our first gold post, our first guide post on our journey of how close am I? Well, how regularly do I forgive people versus hold resentment? That might be a good question for us. <laughs> So um, I'm going to stop there for a minute because we might have some things we want to say about that. And um, I'm going to unmute us. And then um, we are getting close to our time. But if you guys are okay, we might have another five minutes or so. So um, let me see here. Let me unmute everybody because I can unmute everybody at once, which is a little easier. All righty. Any thoughts on that last part? Love your neighbor as yourself. Whew. <laughs> Jill. Um, and this is, you know, I think everybody is under the, the cloud of what is happening in the world right now, but it's, it's really hard. And I don't feel angry so much as I feel really sad. And what I'm referring to is the massacre in the maternity ward yesterday in the Middle East. Oh that really God. challenges me to be a Christian. I mean, an event like that of all places, mm -hmm. killing newborns and mothers have just, uh, they were saying they're like, I don't know, 19 babies that had gone to another hospital that had no mother now. That is the kind of, this, this mm -hmm. is when, you know, forgiving because at first I'm angry, I was just furious, and then I was sad. So, you know, mm -hmm. speak to me about that because it's, it's on days like this, that it's, you know, I'm really, it, it challenges my faith a lot. And Jill, I did not hear the story. Did, I mean, maybe your girls did, but there I was had a massacre in, in Afghanistan of a yeah. maternity hospital. Just gunmen went in and, and murdered just newborn babes and, oh, and mothers. Well, yeah. I mean, it was a maternity hospital. Mm -hmm. It was no other kind of hospital, not where anyone, in Afghanistan yesterday. And I don't watch the news very much. I really don't. I try to say, but it popped up, you know, on my watch and yeah. things like that. So um, anyway, and I apologize for up and down. Up in the mountains, when a workman shows up that you've been yeah, waiting for, you, have to go, yeah. you go and answer the doors. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I understand. And thank you for bringing that to us because those are, those are, you know, those are the hardest things for us to deal with. Um, yeah. Things like that, mm -hmm. things like school shootings, things like, um, you know, we, there's just a senseless, um, you know, act against other people. You know, we get all affronted by people saying something rude to us or cutting us off in traffic. And boy, how minor league is that compared to some of the real evils that are going out there? But, you know, Jesus tells us and he told his disciples, this road is not going to be easy. He said the hardest things in the most simple of words. 
-hmm. and and that that's the constant that's the constant frustration that we have yeah he said the simple thing love each other and that really sounds simple but the actual doing it is actually very hard it's very hard for us because mm -hmm. our, our own human nature and because of the evil that persists in this world um you know i people who don't believe in evil i just don't get that because all you got to do is turn on the news mm -hmm. to see the evil that's out there and there are people with evil hearts and evil desires and that just you know needlessly hurt other people kill other people and it is very hard for us to reconcile with that um and i think it, i think that's a good thing i think it's a good thing for it to be hard for us because if it was easy for us to really reconcile with that, then there wouldn't be a whole lot of theological weight to what we're doing. I think the fact that it is so hard for us that, you know, it, it's, it's a nail in our hand on the cross, on our own cross. It causes us pain to do that. It causes us pain to forgive. It causes us pain to forgive people who are absolutely evil, but it's part of our process. It's part of our process of realizing that, yes, Jesus is even calling on those. You know, remember what Jesus said on the cross, forgive them, Father, for they do not know what they have done. Even as he was hanging on the cross with the pain of those nails still in him, he forgave the very people that hammered those nails into his hands and feet. I'm not saying it's easy, and I'm sure it wasn't easy for him. But once again, he's modeling for us even if I can do this with what people have just done to me, we can forgive those who do evil in this world. And I'm not saying it's easy and it shouldn't be easy. And, and you are, we're all going to have to go through all of the stages of this anger and grief and sadness and disillusionment. That's normal. That's the, we wouldn't be good Christians if we didn't feel that way. Um, but at the end of the day, we have to come to a point that we can forgive and say, you know, God forgive this man uh, or man, woman or whoever it was that did this. We can't tell anymore. Um, knowing that God's going to have his own judgment for those people. You know, he's not going to answer to anybody here, but he is going to have to answer to God. And so we can forgive him, though, and not carry that on with us and not carry the weight and burden of that because we can give it up to God and know that God is going to be the one that corrects us and is going to be ultimately the judge and the jury and, and the prosecutor of what this guy's actions were. That is not up to us to do. Mm -hmm. And I'm not, once again, I'm not saying it's easy. It's the mm -hmm. hardest thing that we have to do in life. It really is, is to forgive those who, like I said, are pretty much unforgivable. Mm -hmm. But yet as we're on our walk, that's, that's, that's the broken glass and sharp pebbles that we have to walk on in our walk with Christ. And we just have to do it sometimes, you know, to get to the good side, to really see, because, you know, we never know what it might be somebody that we know that does something crazy like that and would want forgiveness for them, even despite their bad acts and even despite their evil. Um, we still want forgiveness for all of God's creation. So, yeah. Jill, that, Jill that's kind of the big picture. Um, what I do, and, and I have a, a friend, the older friend that says to me all the time is, Sharon, you have a different look at death than most people do. <laughs> and I look at that, that those children and those women are in the arms of Jesus. That's, that's my faith. I'm not, I don't want to die, but I'm ready to, you know, I feel that I will be, hopefully I've led a life that will put me in the arm of Jesus. So what we're doing is, as we talked about earlier, we're mixing our earthly lives. Yes, that's a slaughter. That's awful. You know, that hurt them, that took them away from us, but that's the earthly thing. The ultimate thing is that I know, we know those babies and hopefully those mothers are in the hands of our Lord. And, and from now on, they will be blessed. It, the hard part is us who remain and have to forgive or accept. You know, that reminds me of the uh, the murder of the innocents, uh, the two-year-olds that Herod sent out and mm -hmm. murdered all those little children babies. because they were all the babies because they were two years old. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, just for that reason alone. Mm -hmm. and, uh, 
you know, um, and you think, well, what about the soldiers that did that? Mm -hmm. yeah. So, yeah. And, and you know, what, 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 one of the one of the biggest things is that that I've heard people throw out is they say, you know, when you can forgive Hitler, <laughs> yeah. you, you're you're truly a Christian. And it's the same thing you're saying with yeah. the innocents. I mean, the millions of people that maybe he didn't kill personally, but were killed under his order exactly. uh, by people who mm -hmm. followed him and his soldiers, but still. He killed him. I mean, he, he's the one yeah. that, that put it in motion and pulled the trigger. And, and you know, um, that's, that, that's, those are the tough things in life that we deal with every day mm -hmm. are the people, you know, like the Hitlers and, and things like that. And they're evil. They're, they're just evil personified just as Jesus is divinity personified. Um, but at some point, he was still a little boy and he was God's creature. And mm -hmm. this earth just did really nasty awful things to him to make him turn out the way that he did and you know well, satan, were, satan entered his life instead of jesus and, and god and um it was know. a whole it was a whole group of people it wasn't one person right absolutely uh -huh. mm -hmm. uh -huh. the irony is the taliban is not is saying they didn't do it no so nobody ever does it and the taliban says they didn't do it yeah so let's just, yeah. Father, I, I, I have to go and say what uh, Jill is, if it wasn't for our faith, I think, you know, we would just be, it'd be horrible for us because mm -hmm. at least we can try to get through with it. You know, things like this that happen, we can pray about it. We can, you know, we know Jesus and mm -hmm. has got a plan. Uh, we don't know what that is, but I think that faith helped us get through what we, that mm -hmm. awful thing. I mean, those kind of things I, I saw on the TV the day where this little baby was thrown off the cliff. I mean, I just about cried. That was right here somewhere. It was, I mean, I don't think it was in Florida, but it was somewhere the father got upset. Mm -hmm. It's so much of that. And it just, it breaks your heart. But I think it wasn't for our faith that I don't know how any of us would get through it, yeah. you know, constantly, you know, or just be hard hearted. One of the, I mean, you know. I deal with this all the time, going into the prison from family and, you know, just dealing with evil versus forgiveness. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's, I just have so many people that say, why do you do this? But it's, I'm not doing it. You know what I mean? It's, right. I have to do it. I feel like I have to do it. Mm -hmm. I'm sure everyone has read the last few words of Anne Frank. I still believe that people are good. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The yeah. last page she wrote in her diary. Yeah, and, and we have to live by that. We have to live by the goodness and not be overcome by the darkness. Um, you know, and, and particularly in times like that that are dark where we have these things going on, that's really a call to us to be the light. That's, you know, to turn our lights up. Like they said, don't hide them under a bushel. <laughs> Put them out there for all the world to see and, and show people the goodness in this world instead of the evil. Um, you know, certainly we have the old thing, if it bleeds, it leads, you know, when we turn on the news, you don't ever get good news. You yeah. get who killed who and yeah. who shot who and who's doing bad. Mm -hmm. and, um, you know, yeah. not so-and-so saved a kitten from a tree. Um, we don't get to hear about the good things except for maybe the last 30 seconds of the news exactly. when they have their little community thing. Uh, you know, they throw a little bone out to people of something good going on, but Gosh, you know, if you really look into it, there's a lot of good going on in this world, too. Mm -hmm. um, oh, look, at all, look at all the nurses and the doctors that are taking their lives in their hands. For Pete's sake, uh, even the folks that, um, that are delivering stuff to people, you know? I mean, all these folks, the people in the grocery stores that are taking their lives in their hands to make sure that there's food for us. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean... There are a lot of people that do good things for others, and, and that's what we need to highlight, not, not yeah. you know, um, we need to be mindful of the evil things. We need to mourn those evil things. Um, but, you know, we also, we also need to be a light, too, though. We need to look at the good things that are going on and realize that there is a balance there and, and try to make the light outshine the darkness, um, you know, because the darkness usually comes in a tidal wave, not in a trickle. Yeah. And, um, you know... Before we go, is that Lauren and Mark? Lauren and Mark? Yes, yes. it is. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I, I, we have a special prayer consideration in my Franciscan order. And so I will put them on that list. 
And that's like 9,000 of us worldwide will all be praying for Lauren and Mark tonight. Thank you, Rosemary. That. Yeah, and, and Rosemary, um, Mignon Edwards has also asked us to lift up Tiffany in prayer. If you could add Tiffany to that list as well. I certainly will, yeah. Okay. I would like to ask for prayer. Uh, my son, Mark, who most of you know, to, um, into the hospital on Friday for alcohol poisoning. And uh, he's still in intensive care. He's been in intensive care since Friday. So um, anyway, I could use prayer for him. Oh, of course. Thank yes. you for letting us know that, Cindy. We'll add him tonight, too, to the evening prayer prayer list. How is your son on the ship, Cindy? He is still in the warehouse testing positive for COVID, but shows no symptoms. So they keep testing him every three or four days. Good. But no symptoms. Is Just this your son, alcohol. Cindy? This your is my son? son? Yeah, I yeah. have two sons and two daughters. Yeah. Hmm. So the one, the one in the Navy is in, stuck in a warehouse in Guam. So. Yeah. Okay, so what is your son's name that's in the hospital? That's Mark. Mark. It's Mark. Okay. The one that just got married in March. Yeah. Oh, yeah. my. Okay. Yes, he relapsed. And, and um, uh, just so y'all will know as well, and I don't know uh, how much you've been keeping in touch with um, uh, Paul Proctor, uh, Pat is going in for a procedure uh, today trying to figure out what's going on with her and um, certainly uh, they could both use uh, your prayers. I think they were getting ready to leave for Texas this week and now yeah. that's been delayed because um, she's been sidelined with this but certainly lift Pat up as well uh, for her okay. procedure that hey they find a good diagnosis and can help her out with uh, what's going on with her so. Okay yeah. thank you. I lift that up to you as well. Mm -hmm. um, well, I, we are kind of past the time. We're at 1115, so I want to be mindful of that. And um, we'll continue on with Chapter 23 uh, next week. Okay. So go ahead and mark your books and read Chapter 23. And just if I can have one more minute of your time, let's close with prayer. The Lord be with you. And, and also with you. with you. Let us pray. Gracious God, we do thank you for uh, this time together, this time to hear and discern your word. This time to let your word come into us, inwardly digest those words so that they may become a part of our being. Gracious God, we ask your help in living out your word, particularly those words to love one another and to forgive those who do us harm. Gracious God, we need your help with that. We need your presence in making that a reality. And gracious God, we thank you for this group. We thank you for being able to come together in this way we lift all of our cares and concerns up to you in the name of your son, our savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 I thank you thank all you. very much. And um, thank, you. thank you for being here. And we'll see you next uh, Thursday at 10. Okay. And I'll see you tonight Bye. at 6. So. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Bye. Bye Peace now. be with you all. Bye. Bye. Bye.